All right, everybody. Hello, it's Luke with Al's TV, and today we are going to be talking about HHC. Uh, there was a nice study that, uh, or I should say a report that just came out from KCA Laboratories and it talks a lot about um, the issues with the abbreviation HHC when there's in fact uh, eight different varieties of, uh, of HHC but everybody lumps it into the one, um, just the one abbreviation. And so uh, today's video is going to be uh, going into uh, this article and uh, giving you a good understanding of um, why it's important to have uh, certain cannabinoids not just be abbreviated to uh, you know two or three letter words. So uh, let's just get right into it. So first things first, um, so this, uh, this article is in relation to, uh, it's called the discussion of naming and abbreviating hexahydrocannabinol. And it was prepared by uh, Richard A. Sams, Dr. Richard A. Sams. So um, this goes into, uh, you know, pretty in depth at some of its description. So I've tried to keep it as simple as possible for all of you. So let's just uh, dive right in. So the use of non-standard abbreviations to refer to various cannabinoids and their synthetic analogs in the cannabis business sector is common and generally accepted. For example, abbreviations such as THC and CBD are widely recognized and used without misunderstanding in scientific communications, product labeling, advertising, and other applications. However, the indiscriminate and unselective use of abbreviations can lead to ambiguity, confusion, and errors of identification if applied to less widely known substances without verifying that the abbreviation has not previously been used for other substances. So what we're talking about here is um, imagine getting uh, Delta 8 THC versus Delta 9 THC and it all just being labeled as THC. If you got a Delta 10 THC and it was labeled THC, you'd be getting very pissed, right? And so what this is saying is um, it's important for us to double check some of these abbreviations so that we can have clarity and that you don't run into these issues whereby people think they've either purchased a product or they're consuming a cannabinoid when in fact they're actually consuming something different. So... Um, from there, uh, basically, we just jump into uh, hexahydrocannabinol is named based on its structural relationship to CBN and in which the three double bonds in, in the ring on the upper left of CBN in the, in the figure have been replaced by saturated bonds in HHC resulting in hexahydro derivative with six more hydrogen atoms in CBN. So um, basically, this, uh, this goes into explaining further in detail uh, just about that synthesis. It talks about um, how hexahydrocannabinol has been known since the 1940s, and it was prepared by a catalytic hydrogenation of Delta-9 and Delta-8-THC. And um, we discussed this in the... Um, we discussed this in the... Um, the Colorado Chromatography's interview, and basically hydrogenation is, is the same process as uh, hydrogen, uh, adding more hydrogen, um, and that is done under pressure and using substances such as palladium and, uh, and a few others. And basically, uh, same thing as if you added uh, olive oil and now you have margarine, that went through a hydrogenation process. Um, so basically what this ends up saying is is when hhc is prepared by thc from thc by hydrogenation the stereochemistry at carbon atoms c6a and c10a is preserved but the stereogenic center is created at c9 therefore the hhc resulting from hydrogenation of thc is a mixture of trans 6ar 9r 10ar hhc and trans 6AR9S10AR-HHC, basically saying uh, 9R-HHC and 9S-HHC. 
And what this basically goes forward in, in saying is, is that um, because there is some what would be considered natural, uh, um, natural forms of HHC, that, um, basically this says here that the stereochemistry between the 6A and, uh, and C10A are natural materials for which it's prepared. Some of the alternatives would be considered unnatural stereoisomers and, uh, and that would then lead to a different cannabinoid. So um, as we go down further into this, uh, you can see that there is in fact uh, eight different stereoisomers of HHC. And since each of these isomers could be named HHC, um, it would actually be different and these would not be the same compound and therefore naming them the same could lead to some issues. And further down here, it says um, other derivatives of HHC with uh, uh, substituents on, uh, on the basic scaffold shown in figure one have been reported. These substances are typically named as derivatives of hexahydrocannabinol. For example, addition of the water of water to the double bond in delta 9 THC produces a mixture of 9A uh, hydroxy HHC and 9B hydroxy HHC. Basically, uh, this is saying that again, we have different derivatives of HHC and it is very much different. Um, in all studies uh, that were referenced, um, what happened in these studies is they were abbreviated as derivatives of HHC in which the uh, substituent groups were identified. In no case was the abbreviation HHC used to refer to the substituted hexahydrocannabinol. What this is saying is, is in these studies, in these studies, it was very clearly laid out that HHC um, in no case was the abbreviation HHC used to refer to substituted hexahydrocannabinol. What that is saying is, is that uh, it was very clear that uh, the HHC over here was not abbreviated. These derivatives of HHC were not all abbreviated into one saying HHC. These studies, uh, so however, the discovery of the 11-hydroxy THC uh, a major metabolite of delta-9 THC in humans is more psychoactive than this parent substance. This is when you eat delta-9 edibles and you get far more higher. That's because it's 11-hydroxy THC and it's not delta-9. And so uh, this is actually what led to the, synth the synthesis of 9B hexahydrocannabinol and the discovery that it possesses uh, antioseptic uh, antioceptive activity in mice getting this is getting getting in there to learn all this new vocabulary for you all uh, but did not re, uh, did not uh, reverse the effects of morphine withdrawal in dependent monkeys basically what that is saying is is that uh, the antioceptive activity what that basically means is the reduction in uh, the pain or suffering from um, uh, how do I put this? Um, basically what this is saying is, is that if you're going through some pain or suffering through withdrawals and you were to use hexahydrocannabinol, it would aid in that withdrawal, reducing the overall harmful effects. However, what it says is, is that did not, the, uh, did not reverse the effects of morphine withdrawal in dependent monkeys. So they recognize, hey, this has some properties to it whereby uh, it can reduce the painful suffering during withdrawals, however, not to the extent of morphine. Um, and so after this study, they identified uh, basically um, BHHC or simply put, um, or simply HHC in subsequent publications. The use of HHC as an abbreviation for 9B hexahydrocannabinol may be problematic because it has the potential to create confusion and uncertainty about the identity and properties of substances incorporated into products offered for sale to the public unless specific names and identifications are used. Furthermore, the references cited above have been cited more than 50 times in reference to scientific publications, thereby potentially spreading the use of this abbreviation. So the conclusion here 
The use of HHC as an abbreviation for hexahydrocannabinol uh, that is prepared by catalytic hydrogenation of delta-9 has a long history of use. The use of HHC as an abbreviation for substituted hexahydrocannabinols is much more recent and risks misidentification and uncertainty regarding the intended substance. Therefore, it is recommended that HHC be used as an abbreviation for hexahydrocannabinol and the stereochemistry and subs, uh, substituents be added to the abbreviation to create an abbreviation that is specific and unambiguous. So uh, just, to, just to repeat here, um, Therefore, it is recommended that HHC be used as an abbreviation for hexahydrocannabinol and that the stereochemistry and substituents be added to this abbreviation to create an abbreviation that is specific and unambiguous. Well, I didn't have to say amb <laughs> abbreviation uh, too many times there, did I? Um, so basically what this is saying is, is hey, Let's not be stupid about this. And if you were to give an example here where we labeled everything as THC, when in fact there was multiple different versions of THC, which we have Delta 8, we've got Delta 9, we've Delta 10, we've got 6A, 10A. It, that would be foolish, right? That would be foolish to do that. And right now, that's exactly what is happening with HHC, is that everybody is just calling it HHC, and in fact, what we're finding is, is that it's not HHC, it's either 9B HHC, it's 9R, 9S HHC. And in fact, there's actually eight other, uh, uh, there's actually eight other stereoisomers that are, uh, are of HHC. And at the end of the day, when you just buy something that says uh, this product is hexahydrocannabinol, there's really no way for you to know that. So um, food for thought for all of you. Make sure you know what you're consuming. Um, make sure to do your research. I will make sure to uh, add this in the, in, the, uh, in the description below. And at the end of the day, just do your best to be educated, right? You can read this yourself in full. And I would just advise you to get familiar with this. I know some of the terms can be hard to keep up with, but the main thing is, is like, do I want to know what I'm consuming? If there's brands, companies out there that are just using blanket terms for these products, is that a company that you would like to work with? And for some of you, it could be a better company for your budget and that the answer could be totally yes. Uh, for some of you though, um, and I hope many of you, you would want to make sure that you would ask those questions and know what you're consuming so that you don't end up consuming something that you don't want to. And um, not only that, but if you find something that you love, then you can get it again and again and again and not buy something different expecting the same result and then being pissed because you got a different compound. So um, that's it today. Uh, we're also going to have a follow-up to this, which is talking about the inconsistencies of HHC testing. And in that, you'll be you'll find some surprises about uh, what HHC actually is when you're consuming it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. Parliament out. Ha!